<laughs> Speak for yourself, Eddie. No, that's only a joke. Wait. P. Fiatko. No, what did Marisa say? The, com the composer? Modern day composer refuses to die. Refuses to die. Yeah. And if you can imagine putting that into a manifesto. <laughs> People don't even do manifestos anymore. What's happened to the world? <laughs> And, uh, well, there's, there, I, that's a male, no doubt about that, right there. That's a giant of a track. Well, that's a male. Yep, that's a male cast. How can you tell? You know, we have, uh, we are constantly on the search, first on the artistic side, of course, and whether you could give an, both of you give an impression of the atmosphere of the beginning of the, the electronic music studio as you experienced it in Los Angeles or in America, and you here in Paris when you started out with Musique Concrete? Well, it was uh, first in the French radio, as you know, as I mean, uh, at this time. Uh, it was a very small studio, and, uh, you know, we were looked at like uh, more or less crazy people. So, I mean, we had uh, these funny ideas. Let me tell you an 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 another anecdote with the Corbusier and him. <coughs> we were once at the place of Le Corbusier, invited for dinner, and uh, Le Corbusier started saying about music that he had invented uh, uh, the concrete music, that is the recorded music, and therefore the music that you can produce by sounds that are pre-recorded. And he had uh, written about that, uh, calling it uh, music en concert, that is the calm music. Mm -hmm. And uh, Varese afterwards, when we, he didn't say anything, but afterwards he said, how can this man pretend that he had discovered the uh, concrete music? When I did that, it is the organized sound. <laughs> it's interesting. And then you had to perfect whatever technique that could be perfected using gear that was uh, really primitive. I mean, really. And when I started working with tape, I didn't even own a tape recorder. I had to borrow machines from people. And like uh, somebody's father owned a reel-to-reel -reel Pentron tape recorder, but he never used it, and it was in the closet. You know, we could easily wind up uh, wasting the entire show trying to find that reel of tape on the floor. So all of the editing of that you do here? Yeah, it's all done here. And this is parts of material that you would have to gather little bits and pieces from different roles uh, to collect them to print the master tape on this machine. And the mixes, m most of the material for that is along this wall. I'll show you. Do you think your Sanaka solo can be along with it? I'm, I can't remember whether or not we mix that from uh, Bremen. But the 88 tour starts here and goes each one of these is an hour all the way down to here and then starts down this shelf here and runs all the way down to here and the things where there's missing that means the things are probably down on the floor someplace und doch ist ein Computer, den er gestern gekauft hat, nicht im geringsten in der Lage, vieles von dem äh, zu realisieren, was ich mir schon in den 50er Jahren vorgestellt habe. I think that probably that, that desire lurks in the back of every composer's mind. You know, that the more control they have over their idea, the better chance the audience has to hear what they really had in mind at the point where they came up with the idea. Right. And I hope that one day you know, in a utopian world that all composers will be able to do that. 
but that would be the most fan fanciful thing that I will say during this interview. <laughs> we think Bigfoot's been let out of flying saucers. What do you think? Don't you think it's even necessary or, or it's in any case possible to heighten the understanding and also that feeling by what you can find in structures? If you cared. But there are people who like it just because they like it and they have absolutely no musical training. If they knew, if you started talking to them about structures, they would be turned off. Uh, they like it on a gut level and that's that, or they hate it on a gut level and that's that. Either way, you can't persuade them by talking about the structure or the mechanics in it. The only people who would be interested are maybe musicians, maybe composers, maybe statisticians, certainly not critics because, you know, that, that would spoil all their fun. But, um, <laughs> You know, suffice it to say that the music is structured, no matter what you think it sounds like. There's a reason for everything to be in its place. It's planned that way, and it's when, especially when it's played by the computer, it's being played correctly. Huh. Like it or lump it. There it is. That was my idea. So, um, I don't think that it's really worthwhile to dwell on the idea of uh, you know, structural analysis of it. But I will mention that on three occasions, I have been sent treatises, like graduate uh, master's treatise. Or College kids here comes from all over the United States, man. They want to do a thesis on Bigfoot. They get 100 on it. So I know there are some people who care about structure, but let's say they're really weird. Still. Oh, yeah? <laughs> What is what is evolution if you don't have the if you don't concede the possibility to find these things that are let's say beyond the gut feeling? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I always uh, was under the impression that you know people think that love is something really wonderful to aspire to, and al it always occurred to me that love w it, that should be the basis of everything. And then the good stuff happens when you get beyond love, because love is a mere thing, as far as I'm concerned. It's mere. And all the good stuff is out there. It's beyond love. We have a whole ge generation of people that have never listened to a piece of music without a picture attached to it. They don't know that music originally didn't have some kind of picture there, you know? A record, what's that? Let's go see a video, you know? And if it's more than three minutes, they've already lost interest in it. Ich sage immer, man kann ja die Augen zumachen und dann hört man die Musik als reine Musik, als rein akustisches Ereignis. Aber
our forces fight. They and their families are in our prayers. May God bless each and every one of them and the coalition forces at our side in the Gulf. And may he continue to bless our nation, the United States of America. So in the midst of all of this, if you want to try and present something that's brand new to an audience, you have to find a visual element of one type or another. The music either has to be in conjunction with a film, a video, a stage event, dancing, something. It's, it's almost unimaginable for a U.S. market that somebody would buy a ticket to go and sit in a room and hear something played. Do you think this is a sign of the times that will change again? No. We're headed directly into a predominant, predominantly visual... No, I, I wouldn't say it that way. I think we're heading into the dark ages. <laughs> I think that Ronald Reagan helped with that a lot. He opened the door to the past for us and, and did everything that he could through his policies to set America on this uh, course careening backwards in time, past the picket fence, back into this you know, world of uh, emptiness. Das Ende vom Lied, altes Eisen. Verschrottet. Tut mir leid. You don't like to go out too much, do you? No. 